Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be having a look at Italeri's 170 second scale F35B. I picked up a couple of masks and a couple of extra things for this kit, so I hope you enjoy. And without any further ado, let's get on with the video. I hope you enjoy. So as per most kits these days, we started in the cockpit. Specifically, we started assembling the seat. The seat is made out of two halves. These two halves then have the padded section slotted in between them. The fit here is really, really good. However, I do recommend emulating what I'm doing here and just using some tweezers to plop them to place. We then moved on to the control panel. The control panel is molded as one piece and slots straight into the cockpit. So once the control panel was all cemented in, it was then time to add a couple of extra details. There's only two extra details that have to be added to this kit, that is the control stick and also the throttle. As you can see, I have used black paint just to pick out a couple of details and also to add the um, some black to the dashboard, I guess we can call it. It was then time to add the provided decal for the cockpit. I usually don't like to use decals on the cockpit if I can, however F-35s only really have screens as a cockpit so there was no real other option. However saying that, these decals are really durable, quite thin and really easy to work with. So I then thought the cockpit looked a little bit bland just in its grey, so an oil wash was used to pick out some of these details. Perhaps I went a little bit overboard here, but hey, it looks more interesting doesn't it? cockpit then snaps into place. No fit issues here whatsoever and a very impressive fit for that matter. You can see here how I continue to point out a couple of details with black. Before going on to connect the two fuselage halves, if you do want to display your F-35 in beast mode, you have to drill out all the appropriate holes for the pylons. Furthermore, there is a little bit more preparation by installing the gear bays before we bring the two fuselage halves together. These have two really nice big locating pins that go in with no issue whatsoever although I am making a right meal of it here. So once gear bays are all cemented in, it was time to move on to constructing the complex fan system that the F-35 has to allow it to go into VTOL and uh, hover around. So as you've seen over the past couple of clips, I've just been attaching turbines and putting them into casings and whatnot. There's quite a few to do, so it can take a little bit of a while. However, they all go together with no issue whatsoever, so it is just a very nice process indeed. Itilary suggests that you do a couple of sub-assemblies and then connect them all within the fuselage. However, I do recommend that you do a couple more of the sub-assemblies outside of the fuselage as sometimes it can get a little bit chaotic in there and it makes it easier to manipulate them when they're out. So that's a little tip for you. So Itilary actually supply a very, very nice looking engine for this kit. However, there's no real proper way to display it, which is a little bit of a shame to have this much detail. However, um, everything goes together very, very nicely and there's this lovely texture pattern on the outside of the engine, which as you'll see in a second, looks very, very good with the wash. In this kit, on the whole, there are a lot, a lot of very nice location pins, which I didn't have any issue with whatsoever. They are very big, so it can just take a little while to get into place. So, after I'd assembled everything, it was time to do a little bit of painting. Here you can see me using Vallejo's Insignia White, I believe it's called, or Blanco, one of the two, uh, just to spray the interior of it. The F-35, as I learnt, uh, uses an awful lot of white paint, so I recommend stocking up on some before you start this kit. I also sprayed the inside of the intakes, however, I'll get into how they assemble in a second. To prevent the amount of times that you spray, I also recommend spraying the top halves of all of the intakes if you're going to be displaying this in the VTOL mode. So as previously discussed, there is not a huge amount of this engine which is shown, but that didn't mean I didn't want to make quite a nice job of it. So here I am using Ammo Mix Metallic Color Range, I think specifically the steel color, just to give it a nice dusting and coating. So the white turbines looked a little bit boring to me, so to jazz them up and also define each individual turbine, I'm using a wash. It's a very good technique and it is very quick, easy and efficient. I then reuse this wash, but this time on the engine to really accentuate all of the raised detail. I like to use some of Ammo MIG's range of washes. Uh, specifically, I think I'm using their dark brown wash. However, I could be wrong. And here's a finish effect, very nice. So as we were closing in on cementing the two fuselage halves together, there are a couple of other items to 
attach into the fuselage before we can actually cement the two halves together. One of which being this grill that is for the exhaust fan which allows the F-35 to hover. So here's a nifty little bit of engineering from the guys at Italeri. This is a brilliant way of doing the intakes, really eliminates any real uh, problematic seam lines. And everyone knows how problematic seam lines are in intakes. So once both of the intake subassemblies were put together, these were slapped onto the other engine subassembly. These went on, no issue whatsoever, a really nice big groove for the um, pieces of the intake to slip into. You can also see that the other fan was fitted just in front of the intakes. It's also very, very important that you fit those two sidewall pieces as they cannot be fitted afterwards. After that was finished, both the fuselage halves fit together with no issue whatsoever. Just a couple of clamps and a bit of masking tape needed to make sure we have a really nice firm and unproblematic fit. As mentioned before, this uh, brilliant fit was probably down to the nice, uh, nicely placed and nicely sized location pins. Here you can see me using those clamps. These clamps are really, really cheap and honestly a lifesaver. They're almost like a second pair of hands. So with the fuselage halves all snapped together, it was time to work on a couple more sub-assemblies. Here you can see me working on the vertical stabilizers. These come in two parts. You can then take each of these sub-assemblies and snap them onto the fuselage. They have um, quite nicely indented sort of location marks, I guess we can call them, which are actually very, very handy. The only slight issue that I ran into was the uh, fact that the location knob is quite uh, small so there isn't as much place for the glue to contact so I'd recommend using quite a strong glue. Speaking of slight down flaws here was a little one that was quite a big bit of flash however it did come off with no issue whatsoever maybe sit, sat me back about 20 seconds or so. So the ailerons which also act like flaps so I'm not too sure what they are uh, they fit onto the fuselage with no issue whatsoever. The exact same goes for the elevators. After they were all cemented on and cured, it was time to look at a couple more sub-assemblies. This time it was about the pylons. The pylons are actually constructed up of two pieces and they go together really nicely actually. They almost snap together. These are then all cemented onto the fuselage. I'm not too sure if I did something wrong here. However, the um, locating pins are far smaller than what the recommended hole size is. So maybe that's something to look out for. After that was done, it was time to glue the canopy on. The canopy was glued on with PVA glue as it dries clear and isn't very toxic, let's just say. So with canopies all masked and glued on, it was time to do a little bit of painting. How exciting. So the entire model was initially given a thin coat of Ammo's One Shot Primer. I like to use the black colour and I like to use Ammo's One Shot Primer purely because, as it says in the name, one shot. It's quick, it's easy and I just like the finish that it gives. Another reason for me using a black primer is because it does create a brilliant base for me to do some pre-shading effects. If you've watched a couple of my builds, you know how much I do love to do mottling, which is a process which has been playing on screen for the past 20 seconds or so. Mottling is pretty much taking a lighter colour, it doesn't have to be white, which I'm using in this case, but it can be a lighter colour, and pretty much just creating a kind of wibbly wobbly pattern, as you can see what I'm doing here, to create differences in tone. So you see there's a couple of places where it looks much blacker and there's more intensity with the white. So it just creates this effect that it isn't going to be a very 2D and one dimensional paint which um, covers on top. Also on the whole with mottling you seem to like to not really engage in colouring or mottling over the panel lines. This is what some people say is a Spanish way of modelling mot or one of the two uh, but it pretty much Spanish modelling or modelling has very very pronounced panel lines and this is done by having a darker colour there beforehand. I quite like how it looks, some people say it isn't realistic, maybe it isn't realistic but you know it's it's interesting to look at so that's why I do it. So I knew mottling was going to be a necessity for the F-35 because if you're not too sure what the F-35 looks like it's uh, it's very modern you know modern jets they like to use their greys and it likes to be quite monotone. I'm not too sure why this is, it's quite boring uh, but I needed to find a way to jazz it up somehow, so by using mottling to create all these tonal variations it seemed like an appropriate way. 
So here it is after all of my mottling. Took a while, however, the effects that it does produce is well worth it. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So on some actual paint, the F35 grey is a very, very well debated topic. However, <laughs> I pretty much just picked a couple of greys which I knew were in the right sort of region, closed my eyes and grabbed one. Um, if you do want to know the actual colour that I used for my F35, I will hopefully leave a comment down below as I cannot remember right now. Uh, but yeah, it, honestly, there's no need for us to get into this debate about the F35 colour because it's been had many, many times. Choose what grey you think is right and go with it. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Look, it's your model. Don't worry about it. Anyway, back to some actual painting tips and technique. I was putting this down in really quite light coat so I didn't destroy all of my mottling effect and this was especially um, especially important in this build as otherwise there would literally be no interest to this build whatsoever. So yeah, very very thin coats, almost dusting it over and you know, just, just taking it slow. I must say, after this build, I'm definitely craving a more interesting camouflage and painting pattern. I've gone from a Spitfire where there was all of this invasion stripes and everything to a plain grey plane. So, you know, but you know, you need to try it. So I did then repeat this painting process on the underside. I left the uh, bomb and all of the weapons bays and the gear doors, I left them off but they were all painted off of camera using the exact same mottling process as was previously displayed here. Um, I don't usually like to put the um, weapon bay and gear bay doors onto the model before I have to if I can purely because sometimes they get broken off or if I want to put them on they usually have to be done with PVA glue and then ripped off afterwards because I want to display them open. So sometimes it's just less hassle to paint them after and do a little bit of masking. However, this is all up to you and it depends on how you like to model. Also, it's 2023, I'm trying to bring in some new habits this year. So we are starting off by wearing gloves for once while touching my models. Uh, gloves are not a necessity, but they definitely help to make sure you don't get any of your skin oils or you know smudge any of the paint onto the plane. So I recommend you get into the same habit that I'm doing if you don't already use this habit. So not really paint related, but I do actually have another F35 in my stash. Not this specific one, but an F35 of some sort will keep it a secret. And I'd love to try and do this uh, sun bleached effect on it. Um, so if anyone has any ideas on how we could achieve that, or has anyone done it before, please do leave a little comment below and I, I'd love to have a little debate about it. But anyway, onwards. So time to now talk about the little, little goodie that I got for this kit. So if you have any previous sort of um, knowledge of the F35, you know that there are these strips of lighter grey tape that go all over them. I believe these are called ram tape and they're sort of stealth tape if you will it just makes the um the aircraft more stealthy so i wanted to try and emulate these and as the italeri kit does not provide decals for all of these there are a couple of decals for them i thought it was a good idea to purchase the edward set for them the masking set i do firmly believe that if you want to make uh, f35 and one to third uh, not one to 30 second one seventy second scale and you have a bit of time to spare, the, the Edward mask set is an absolute necessity. It completely transforms this kit and it is worth every penny. So that, that is my view on it. So the masking process does take a while, but once it was all done, I sprayed it in, I believe a light ocean gray I went with. That, that might be completely wrong there. However, I do think that is what I went with. I thought I could be smart and not have to mask anything else. I, I was a little bit fed up with masking to be honest with you at this point. Uh, but as you'll see in a second it created this almost halo effect which you'll see when I'm peeling them off. Here we go. But yeah that was just sprayed very very lightly. Um, there was no real need to worry about trying to preserve any mottling effect because that was already all gone because I sprayed it in a previous grow. There you can see that sort of halo effect. So. 
my advice to you is even if you're sick of masking do a little bit more masking this was later corrected just by um re uh, getting the other gray that i used and very very um carefully going around where all these places were i used a little bit of a diluted solution as well like thinned maybe a little bit more than i usually would just so if i did overspray onto all the ram tape it didn't you know it, it wasn't like a be all and end all so my preferred method for quickly demasking is to get a scalpel blade um pretty much just get the corner of each little bit flick it up and then come in with a pair of tweezers as you can see here and just peel them all off and stick them to your thumb it just makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker so the only real thing i have to say about the whole masking is it does take time it definitely added at least two days onto the whole build process but in, in my opinion it is definitely worth it saying this the edward kit was brilliant it fitted exactly how i wanted it to fit but it just missed out a couple of areas uh these being quite simple areas to mask they were the there's a little almost tape around the inner bit the, the, the front of the intake which i'm sure you'll see in a second and also a couple of places on the wings these are all very simple places to mask off and you know it's just a matter of using a little bit of tamiya masking tape to get the job done here's a little bit of a moment of me thinking out loud however what i did notice during this was how similar Tamiya masking tape and the Edward masking tape that they use is. So I wonder if they have an affiliation and they use the same sort of thing and Tamiya sends like them big, big chunks of it. Who knows? If you do know, do let me know down in the comments. And look, there you go. There's the little front bit of the intake. That was done just using some flexible uh, Tamiya masking tape, which is very, very good. I did pick myself some up over Christmas and honestly, game changer. And with the final pieces of masking tape pulled off, there she was. Look at her, all of her ram tape. It definitely takes a while, but in my opinion, 100% worth it. Even with all the ram tape done, I was not done with masking. As you can see, there are a couple of areas um, of white which had to be masked off. These included weapon bays, gear bays, any type of bay, it was masked and painted in white. So with weapon bays, gear bays, every bay all having its base color of white it was time to pick out a couple of details this was done with an array of colors however black red and the also tamiya buff color were mainly used to pick out these sort of details these um details they were just kind of picked out they weren't as per picked out according to what they look like in real life i i i don't know one 70 second scale just was a little bit too small for me to do that so after a couple of days of masking, demasking, painting, oh goodness, a lot of painting and masking, it was nice to get back onto some sub assemblies. Here I am doing the very, very distinctive F35B exhaust. The exhaust utilizes a very interesting geometric system to transfer the plane from VTOL mode into normal flight mode. After looking at a couple of reference images of the good old F35B exhaust, it it just seemed to have a couple more wires which um, went up the spine of it, we'll say. So to do this, I grabbed out a, my micro drill bits and just started drilling and poking wire in. It, the, it was just trying to make it look busy. There, once again, was no sort of, oh, this is that hydraulic line. It was make it look busy and just make it look a bit better than what the kit provided. The kit provided a, a very adequate um, nozzle but I just think there was a little bit of room for improvement which I took into my own hands. So if you are interested about how I do my scratch building with all the wires and whatnot I will go into that in more detail in another video I just didn't know in this specific context how many people would want to see it but in, in short it's just intertwining using a bit of super glue having an entry hole an exit hole and you know j just kind of going with the flow, seeing what happens. But yeah, leave a comment down below if you'd like to know how I do this. And there was a the finished result. Initially, this was given a base of Ammo Mix steel color, I believe. However, the F35 nozzle is prone to heat discoloration. So to do this, I literally just grabbed a see-through Tamiya 
blue clear lacquer that's a lot of words um, and just very very lightly sprayed it on there it does a really nice effect as you'll see in a bit the end bit of the f-35 exhaust is actually a different metal couldn't tell you what metal however gun metal does display this very well and then the end tips of it are also a lighter chromey looking metal so to do this i believe i used ammo mix metal uh, polished metal if, if, that's, that's far too many metals so these two sub assemblies were then connected together there you can see a little bit of the old heat discoloration and also the effect the polished tips give so on with more sub assemblies and at this point it was just kind of putting everything together the hard work was done here you can see me putting in the main gear legs these are actually really really sturdy and snap in with no issue whatsoever however it probably would be more sensible to fit them when the instructions tell you rather than when i do it but you know follow the instructions if you're in doubt following on it was now time to put on the sub assembly that i've just been working on fitted in there really really nice however i did almost have a little bit of friction with a couple of the wires which i've put in so be careful if you do try to do that so the F-35 is honestly like a transformer, especially the F-35B. There are so many panels which kind of open up and snap back in. And then there was just this whole process of kind of putting them on. There, um, however, are really, really nice location tabs and marks and pins. So there's really no issue here getting them on. If you can, I'd use PVA glue here to attach all these parts just because, as I previously said with the canopy, dry see-through, if so if there is any like overspill or anything, you're not really going to damage your paintwork. So the weapon bay doors actually do require a little bit of assembly before they can be put on. There are lots of these almost, oh, I don't know how to call them, they're not clips, but their attachment points uh, which will have to be put on be very very careful and read the instructions carefully when you're doing this because i i nearly got them mixed up so it was then time to work on painting the laser designator camera um it, it took me many many attempts to figure out how to do this correctly i tried to brush paint i tried to mask it off However, just spraying the entire thing in grey and then using a cocktail stick to scrape off the paint was the best way. So I definitely recommend doing it like that and not wasting about two hours like, like I did. This was then placed onto the underside of the nose and it was cemented in with some Tamiya extra thin cement. And that was the assembly done. It was then given a nice gloss coat to uh, give it a good base for any weathering or decals that I was going to do. I like using Mr. Hobby's uh, gloss as it's just it's, it's durable and it's quite easy to use. So for applying decals, I use a micro set and micro salt. If you're not too sure what those are, micro set is pretty much a decal setting solution and micro sol is a decal um, solvent. So it softens them and make sure that they conform to all of the details. Um, I've already briefly spoken about the, uh, not details, decals in this kit. They're, they're really nice actually. I don't believe they're cartograph decals, I could be wrong, but they go down brilliantly. Micro set and sole worked flawlessly without them. There's no rippages, there's no things, they're right sort of thickness. They conform to details quite nicely, even without micro set and micro sole. And you know, the colors are sharp and text is sharp. So yeah, on the whole decals get a nice big thumbs up for me. So as I was displaying my model in beast mode, I didn't fully deck it out. However, I did think it was a good idea to put a, a few little bits and bobs on there. Uh, so ordnance is, I believe that's an AIM-54. Oh God, I'm gonna get absolutely rinsed in the comments. However, I put, I know they are paveways, paveways, so you know, I know that much, but they're all molded very nicely. They come in two halves and there's a couple of extra little fins and whatnot you have to put on, but the details are nice. They don't look out of scale. They're not too thick. They're not too soft, you know, all, all well and good. And the decals that are there for the AIM-120s are really nice. So yeah, another big thumbs up. So there you go, you can see all the ordnance is on. The final touch that I really wanted to put on this kit was to weather it up a little bit. 
Uh, and to do that, I just put a the same dark wash as I used in the cockpit, but this time in the weapons bay. The weapons bay on the F-35 is such a complex and truly brilliant thing that it just needs to be done. Oh yeah, and I also put a wash on the exhaust. Uh, I just applied the wash and then using a um, cotton bud, I would kind of brush down in the direction of airflow as you can see on video here. Just, just you know, give, gives it another dimension. So after my last little bit of grubbying up and also giving it a matte finish, I called this one done. Really, really enjoyed this project. Simple, smooth, easy going, no real problems, just a really good project. It was nice to do it, especially after the Airfix 1 to 24 scale Spitfire, which is a brilliant kit, but it's a big kit, you know, and a big kit will always take it out of you a little bit. But anyway, thank you for all the recent support on the channel. It's honestly been mind blowing and I hope you enjoy the rest of the photos. So I'll see you later. Bye bye.